All right, guys, don't attempt this at home. Uh, it's powered back on. I'm just gonna see what happens and flick it off really quick if something goes up in smoke. Ready? I got two PCs here, and these PCs are what I used to refer to as the Pandemic PC. What is the Pandemic PC, you might ask? Well, I'm gonna explain that. So back a couple years ago during the GPU shortage, there were also other parts that were going through shortages, one of them being power supplies. Uh, here's a good example of a random brand that popped up during the pandemic. Motherboards, cases, pretty much anything that had to be imported ended up having some form of a shortage at some point. Now the shortages on parts other than graphics cards lasted a lot less time. For example, the power supplies were like maybe three months if I remember correctly. And the prices did go up, but eventually they did come back down and you could find them in stock. Motherboards was another one that was very tough. You would find them for three, four hundred dollars because the miners were scooping all of the cheap low end boards and and then just regular people who still wanted to build PCs back then, which is exactly how computers like these got built. And so this is actually from one of my friends. This was part of the donation, which was featured in the last video. He donated all these computers. I have some boards. Um, I got a motherboard that I'm going to fix in this video. These have some pretty embarrassing components in them and I say embarrassing because at the time when we were trying to make computers affordable I'm talking like entry 400 to 500 dollar range with a gaming GPU and you know the ability to possibly stream do homework and suffice as you know a work computer from home we used a lot of Optiplex systems and I can tell just by looking at this IO shield here that this is definitely an Optiplex pandemic PC. Now I'll get into talking about that part, but let me take these computers out of their boxes. All right, so the first PC we have here, this all white one, if you look closely, you can see that there is a green PCB. That's because this is a Dell Optiplex all packed into this fresh brand new case with a pretty old GPU. I think this is probably, it's an R9 270. So this PC at the time in 2020 could play some esports titles and do some other things. I don't know what the actual processor is in here, but we're gonna take this apart and see what it is. So before checking the thermal paste on this lawsuit waiting to happen, I want to power this up and see if it even posts. This computer has not been turned on for nearly two years, so I am curious to see if it turns on. Now real quick before I even flick that switch back there, I noticed that this is the model that has these weird pinouts up here, which means he didn't even connect it, and if I just hit the switch, it's probably going to power on on its own. Yep. Now let's see if it posts. Nice. F1. I would say that that is pretty lucky. So it's actually not too bad. We have an i7 2600 and 16 gigs of RAM. And then the GPU, as I said before, is the classic R9 270. I also noticed that he never got these fans to spin and that is because this board doesn't have a PWM header. Some of the boards have a little header over here that's meant for like a secondary fan, but for some reason this one is missing that. You can still cycle through the RGB, but the only way you can actually hook something like this up is to do one of these which will cause a lot of noise. Or if you're ever gonna build a system like this, uh, I don't know if you should today, but if you do, you can pick up a set of these other fans that have those fans, fans look disgusting. A little hub and these six pin connectors that don't require any PWM. Future editing Kyle here. Um, I just wanted to say that this video kind of goes off the rails and the original goal to build a newer PC with these older PCs cases and some of their parts just kind of, uh, well, you you'll see in a minute. So my plan is to actually fix this motherboard. Apparently it does not boot. I have a feeling it has a bent pin or something in the socket. That's what was told to me before I picked it up, but I haven't checked it yet. And yeah, so I want to put that inside this case because this is still a perfectly good case and then have it set up 
up as an actual PC that is relevant in today's date. But before we do that, let's also check what's inside PC number two. So unfortunately, it looks like this PC has the old standard before uh, Rome was built. And so I'm gonna have to find some way to actually connect this and I don't have any display port cables. So give me a minute to find a cable. Don't get me, Mr. Ghost. This'll do. So if I was smart, I would not be throwing out all my DVI cables. And uh, yeah, so I need to use this adapter to a VGA and we'll see if that'll work. All right, oh, another Optiplex board, of course. Instant power. Now let's see if this turns on. I have no clue if that adapter works. A few moments later. Oh, this monitor, you have to manually select its input. 12 seconds later. All right, so I tried two adapters and now I'm plugged up to the motherboard and I'm still getting no picture. So I'm just gonna rip this card out because I don't know what's going on with it. Ooh, black and red theme with that green motherboard. So I haven't seen these sticks of Dominator RAM in a long time. So it looks like we have six gigs and another six gigs and then two more, probably two gigabyte sticks, four gigs and four gigs. So this is a weird memory combination here. All right, so instead of deciding to figure out if this will post or not, that's probably just gonna take too much time. Let's just get on to fixing this motherboard. So the first thing I'm gonna do before even powering this on is check the socket real quick and see if maybe we have some bent pins. This is the first time I've looked at this board and it looks like, let me get my phone. It looks like we have some bent pins and I'll show you guys a close up. It's gonna be hard to do it with uh, that camera, but I'll show you right now. You want to be really careful with these pins. If you use a brush that's too hard, you will definitely bend them. So I'm just carefully going over where I can see what looks like to be thermal paste. Now I'm just going to lift up some of the pins that look a little bit more flat very, very carefully. You don't want to go too hard or else you can break them off. The point of this is just to make sure it makes a little bit of contact or better contact than it was making before. I also can't help but notice, look how dirty the bottom of this CPU is. There's thermal paste literally all over it. So this could also cause this motherboard not to post. Now let's pop this CPU back in. So we're gonna be using 16 gigs of this Clev RAM. I've never tried it out before. It was super cheap on Amazon. Um, there's tons of brands now just making RAM all of a sudden. So yeah, let's give it a shot. All right, so just ignore the uh, water block that's on top here. I just don't want that thing to move too much. And let's see if it posts. That's not good. Woo! See that smoke? Damn, that was scary. Well, that was pretty scary. Um, I'm kind of at a loss for words. I don't really know what happened here. This is uh, the first time in a while where I've seen a PC catch on fire like that. So I'm gonna take it apart and see what's going on. Um, yeah, loss for words. Editing future self here again. So this next part I just wanna mention, do not do this. If anything ever smokes up like this, it's a really bad idea to turn it back on. But for the sake of this video, I wanna just see what happens if I power it up anyway. I have my fire extinguisher there, and uh, yeah, I'm not gonna save this board. It's definitely toast, so let's see what happens. All right, guys, don't attempt this at home. Uh, it's powered back on. I'm just gonna see what happens and flick it off really quick if something goes up in smoke. Wow. 
fire right there. I'm sorry for all the uh, fan noise. Uh, it stinks so bad in this room, but um, yeah, so I'm gonna test my other parts on this. Uh, hopefully nothing got wrecked. Uh, I think this is a DDR, yep, DDR4 board. So I'm gonna throw the RAM in here, test the card, and I'm checking the power supply as we speak. So let's see if that's still working. Looks like the power supply is still good, so it's not the PSU. Wow, that was uh, pretty scary. All right, sorry if I have beads of sweat coming off my head, but uh, yeah, so here's the test bench and it is working now. I'm fortunate enough that the card and RAM did not get ruined. Everything seems to be okay, except for maybe poor Charmander here. He got a little flame to the head. So upon closer inspection, you can see that the VRMs, or behind the VRMs, actually kind of popped here. There's some kind of a burn mark, and the flames came right from the back of this, so it's probably one of these capacitors, or possibly just the uh, PCB itself, like one of the actual little diodes that's right here, maybe something burned up. But uh, yeah, this smells really bad, and it's a shame. Another great Asus product. Congratulations, Asus. You guys just keep on killing it. So something I noticed right after this incident happened is this little label up top here, which is not really visible unless you're looking at the top of the board. But uh, my theory is that this actually went in for repair to somebody's shop before, and that's some kind of internal serial number because I don't see it on the rest of the board. And what probably happened was it was deemed unfixable and then the dude decided to take it back out and then sell it on Facebook where my friend went to pick it up. And then he said, oh, I'm not sure, it just doesn't power on, but in reality, it's a fire hazard. And yeah, so I don't know, man, this is the risk of buying used hardware on the internet. So it's the next day and I had to wait a little while. My room smelled so bad that even staying in here for more than a few minutes was gonna, I don't know, leave me in the hospital or something. So I decided to scrap the whole project and I'm still gonna build in these PCs. I'll do a separate video on that. But uh, as of right now, that kind of wrench that got thrown in with the motherboard going bad was more interesting than a PC build, I think. Um, yeah, so if you liked the video, like the video, subscribe, do all that stuff if you want, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.